Hi, everyone. I'm Patricia Brown. There are a few things you should know about me. First, you should know that I believe digital media can change how people interact with the world. In my role as an educator, I've seen firsthand how media can transform learning in the classroom and make students come alive. You should also know that I live in Ferguson, Missouri. And you probably heard of Ferguson because that is where Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager, was killed by a police officer in 2014. And we all know those events surrounding his killing spark tension and debate between the relationship between law enforcement and the citizens they're supposed to protect and serve. And from my vantage point, as an educator and as a member of this community, I can see very clearly how that conversation is unfolding. This dialogue is ongoing, it's happening in our cities, in our schools, and most importantly, in our homes. How many of you guys are parents? Well, I'm a parent, have five kids. They range from age four to 17, and they're all boys. <laughs> so in my household, I'm, my husband and I, I'm sure we have talks with our kids that are pretty similar to yours. They go something like, be kind, work hard, education is the key. But as for me, as the only female in a male-dominated household, it's that daily reminder to put the toilet seat down and start running through the house. But as parents of African-American males, my husband and I have additional talks with our kids. We talk about the systemic racism that exists in this country that makes it harder for them to, su to succeed because of their skin color. We teach them they have to work twice as hard and be twice as good for the same opportunities as others who don't look like them. We teach them to avoid violence and instead use their voices to stand up for themselves as well as others. We encourage them to always take the high world and make good choices, no matter how exhausting it may feel, because they may not get a second chance. Most importantly, we teach them that any encounter that they have with law enforcement could potentially be threatening. Yet, we teach them to always respectfully comply, no matter what, because we want them to come home to us. These aren't easy conversations to have. And as parents, we want our sons to be socially aware of what's happening in the world with people that look like them. And we also know that as they get older, our talks about race are going to be more frequent and more specific where the district that I work, we were having some of these conversations, but they weren't as direct and they certainly weren't as deep. And that's not because matters of race weren't affecting our students. In addition to St. Louis being a spotlight for Ferguson, my district made national news when the high school and middle school students walked out in protest of what they felt was unfair disciplinary treatment of African-American students. And at my elementary school, students held several peaceful protests for a crossing guard who had been yelled racial slurs by a motorist. Several incidents through the years caused rising tensions, mainly because of the apprehension to talk about and address these racially motivated events and how they were causing trauma for students and families of color. I started to see the direct impact this was having on my own children. I remember one night, my husband and I were watching the local news, and they were showing the unrest that was happening literally blocks from where we lived. I remember one of my twins, yeah, I got twins, was peering through one of our bedroom, peering through our bedroom door, and I could tell he was mesmerized by what he was seeing, and he was confused, I say a little angry but he couldn't express it into words because he was in second grade. He asked us so many questions that we didn't have the answers to. That made us feel helpless. We had been living in a quiet community for almost 10 years that was suddenly in turmoil. 
Yet we had to go to school and pretend like everything was okay. This was personal for me. As a black educator raising five boys in a predominantly white, wealthy school district, I needed people to have these relevant and authentic and very real conversations, no matter how uncomfortable or difficult. I knew there were others that felt the same way. A small group of parents and teachers from my school recognized that we had to have an honest dialogue about how to talk about race with our kids. We also had to find ways to connect that intersection between what they were experiencing in the classroom and what was happening in the real world. Being an educator and a parent is an emotional roller coaster. We want to protect our kids, yet we want them to experience life. We want them to understand history, but we also want them to be optimistic. I also realized that kids were ready to have these conversations. It was the adults that were uncomfortable. I started to wonder if there was media available that could help us start this conversation. I knew there were several documentaries that covered the events surrounding Ferguson, and a specifically a documentary called The Talk About Race that I knew was especially relevant for our demographic. So I suggested that we watch the documentary because I knew it would give a broad range of perspectives. After watching the film, we gathered at one of the homes of our parents, and we asked our families to come with questions, come with answers, come with stories, but most importantly, come with an open heart to listen. You know what happened? We talked with each other, and we came away with a better understanding of a complex issue that was affecting all of us and our children in every part of their lives. One parent said, it was good for my soul to be with other parents and share our stories and experiences, building awareness, hope, and ideas for action. There were other educators throughout our district that recognized that need to use the events in Ferguson to, as teachable moments. They also discovered other ways to use media as a starting point for conversation for tough issues in the classroom. Our students created and shared personal stories and experiences through blogs and videos and websites, and they also participated in district and citywide forums. Many emotional conversations happen around race and equity and inclusion between parents and teachers and students, and so the healing process has begun. Remember when I said that I believe digital media can change how people interact with the world? I saw this firsthand in my own community. Famous author and activist Alice Walker said, Activism is my rent for living on the planet. I encourage you while you're here at ISTE to find your tribe. Begin that conversation here. Seek out people who are willing to advocate and speak up and use tools like digital media to push forward change. I believe digital media can amplify the voices of marginalized individuals. I believe it can foster dialogue that's sometimes uncomfortable, but absolutely critical. I believe we can do this in classrooms, in homes, across the country, by uncovering those hidden lessons and bringing people together around the traumatic events that are happening in their communities. As parents, as teachers, as neighbors, we have to learn to use digital media to dispel myths and fear. We have to curate trusted resources we can draw from and sources of support we can turn to for guidance. We have, we have the power to be that resource, sparking conversations that propel change, giving all of us a voice as we seek a safe and hopeful future for our children. Thank you.